Hey, good afternoon, Artie. Hey, thanks for coming to the office yeah. again. Yeah, yeah good to always, see you. Always a good time getting downtown. Absolutely, Seeing yeah. you as well. Uh, we're, we're getting into a quick hang of it. Every Thursday we're coming, coming together, discuss the market. Uh, last video got really good, uh, really good viewership, so which was good. Good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get down to it today here. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk a little <clears> bit about <throat> agenda. So let's do a quick market recap. We're going to talk about yields, of course. Uh, we're talking about Tesla and EVs. Uh, we're talking about Schwab's. Uh, there's a lot of chatter that Schwab has negative equity and could go belly up, and that's and that's a big deal. <laughs> uh, and then of course the segment, uh, good, bad, the ugly of the week, and some some uh, trading ideas for next week. Uh, before we get started, let's go to trading terminal and see really what's going on in the market. Uh, Brian, what are you seeing? Uh, what's uh, com something that's standing out for you? Well, I just, uh, I mean, basically, we're just seeing a lot of volatility. I mean, we're down for the week right now, despite the fact we had a we had a pretty decent day today. Yeah, uh, we started out lower and ended higher. Yeah, um, we're kind of looking for us to retest that low from uh, from Wednesday. Yeah. Um, you know, and maybe that's a sign that there's a some kind of a bottom in. Could yeah. maybe a temporary bottom. Yeah. Um, maybe the bottom. We don't know for sure, but yeah. Um, yeah so I think uh, you know volatility volatility remains in the market, and it's uh, you know it's definitely a, a more difficult market to trade when you're um, when the market is like this. Going down is always more difficult because it's a lot more uh, choppy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so it's there was a lot of you know uh, in early like few months ago there was a lot of debate of is this a new bull market or are we still in a bear market? <laughs> what do you think? Is this a new bear market? Well, bull you market? know, I mean, clearly if you, you know you don't have a lot, of, you don't have to have a lot of imagination to draw. If you back that out a bit, if you don't, you don't have a have to have a lot of imagination to draw a trend line there. Yeah, you know, and you can see we've we've definitely broken a trend line. Yeah. Um, you know, from la lower from left. Low, up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that line. Yeah. So we've definitely broken that line, and to me, that tells you that you know we've we've kind of broken down through a, some some levels of uh, support, and, yeah. and now we're struggling maybe to find a bottom here. Yeah. And it does kind of look like this is this area where the, where your line your horizontal line is now. It kind of yeah. looks like it could be an area of support. Yeah. Yeah, and I think people are watching that. So yeah, I'm right, right, right around this area. I mean, yeah. if you're a technical trader, this is kind of a like a hammer doji. It's usually a sign of reversal, but it's hard to see. There's so much news and data coming out. It's hard to just rely on technical. <coughs> I mean, also this looks kind of like a head and shoulder. Yeah. So if this is a head and shoulder, we should go down by the neckline, and then yep. the neckline is about 10 points. So we should probably be around 420, right around here yep. uh, for the head and shoulder. But again, if you're a technical trader, so. Yeah, <coughs> and you know, we and everybody knows we've got a lot of sort of um, headline risk right now. Yeah. You know, we've got the, you know, who knows how long, if if the shutdown, the, the government shutdown is gonna happen, and yeah. if it does, how long it'll last. Um, you know, and, and, you know, all the borrowing that's going on and the debt, and, you know, uh, it's, th there's a lot of stuff that's got people worried, but, you know, sometimes, you know, Wall Street, cr uh, well, they say climbs a wall of worry, right? Yeah, 1,000% so, and yeah. don't don't care. We're going to go to economic calendar and take a look at some of those stuff, but one of the interesting price actions today I saw was TLT. So the rates were up uh, mm -hmm. again another I think thirty basis point. TLT mm -hmm. was down another one and a half percent, and then it climbed back up. Uh, as you know, I'm in I'm in TLT heavy, and mm -hmm. when I saw yeah. that position this morning, I, I felt like just giving up <coughs> and going back home. And that, yeah, and that's yeah. usually for, you know for most traders uh, that that's that the bottom. Would, yeah, that would be the bottom. <laughs> yeah. You'd get out, and and then you'd look at it a week later and think, yeah. Yeah, the, the markets got me, you know. Yeah, exactly. They they, they got me. They got me that day. <laughs> yeah, Tor, Tor was yeah. talking about them yeah. day today. Yeah, the day, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's just really briefly go to economic calendar because I think some of this stuff was interesting. And Nike had earnings too. By yeah, the way. Nike just take, had it some earnings. I was just listening to that coming down. Mm -hmm. I, I think they actually beat. Really? Uh, yep. Yeah, I think they actually beat on. I think they beat on the top line mm -hmm. or on, on the bottom line. On I should say. Line. So they uh, more profitable than expected yeah I think the top line came in pretty much where the market had expected, expected it so it. so Nike sh I would think should be trading up after hours yeah, so we'll, we'll take a look at yeah. uh, momentarily <coughs> but uh, today initial jobless claim everything was okay the GDP numbers came and I think GDP numbers uh, so sales quarter over quarter 2.1 the estimate was 2.2 .2. mm-hmm 
uh, prices it came out at 1.7 the estimate was two so that's yeah. that's a good sign yeah, like that positive. means yeah. Uh, yeah prices are coming down uh, and uh, growth rate 2.1 uh, PC prices pay 2.5. This was concerning. Corporate profits um, mm-hmm. came, came down a lot lower. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that, like these are these are the data that I was called like lukewarm. They're not they're not hot. They're not terrible. Right. They're not cool cold. And right. they're usually good for stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know I think that's why the market rallied a bit today because yeah. there was a bit of confirmation that maybe the the market's slowing a bit. Yeah. But the nice thing is we're not seeing you know a dramatic slowdown at least not yet so like you said sort of like the three bears thing you know too hot just right not too hot not too cold not too hot just right exactly yeah oh yeah they gapped up a little bit up up about two percent a little bit yeah Yeah, i mean the 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 from what i heard and i did wasn't watching the chart on the close what i heard the you know it was the stock itself the price was bouncing all over the place and that's pretty much what that uh that shows but uh, yeah. again not you know uh, relatively positive yeah. I think you know from a consumer standpoint I mean people are watching this because that's sort of you know Nike's a, a real consumer story right 1000% and <coughs> has a lot of exposure in China so yeah. people really care about fair what's going on in China as fair well. amount of exposure in China yeah. and yeah. Uh, but you know it's a it's a higher-end consumer product and so you know it's it's good to see I mean at least they they beat on the top line um, yeah. and uh, you know came in line maybe with uh, their uh, their revenue it, it seems to me like the consumer discretionary names are having having problems yes it's like i don't know if you saw lululemon came up with a partnership with peloton that was that was crazy as well no, i didn't see that um, yeah and so yeah. lulu is partnering up with peloton <coughs> to kind of license their content for the next three years and kind of sponsoring in a way where peloton right uh, instructors will wear lululemon and kind of oh, okay yeah because peloton had their own they had their own gear, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they had their own app, uh, apparel, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, not a bad move maybe for um, for both companies. Yeah. I mean, you know, Lulu gets uh, access to their um, consumers and, yeah, yeah subscribers and, uh, yeah, and Peloton yeah. gets the, the exposure with the Lulu brand, which is really good. Yeah, the the funny the funny thing is, is like nothing is bad for Peloton. Their stock is like four bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and any news is good news. Anything yeah, they yeah. could do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Peloton's probably the biggest winner on that one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so let's go in here. So let's go. I want to start with uh, short banks. Um, banks mm. have had a really terrible time. One of the guys I followed on Twitter, uh, Citrini, his handle is Citrini, you can see on my screen. Yep. In 2022, in October 2022, he said he's shorting Silicon, uh, sorry, uh, Silicon Valley Bank right. as well as Signature Bank. And he said, you know, if you actually mark to market their loan losses, their equity would be negative. Okay. Um, and obviously he was right. And at the time when he did that tweet, he only got 12 likes. Oh, so yeah. He's not, he's not very like, he's not yeah, big yeah. Yeah. on Twitter, but he's a, he's a solid hedge fund manager. He, he's now shorting Schwab. Okay. And he's saying, so once upon a time, I tweeted about a financial institution. He's, he means Silicon Valley Bank that had negative book value. Um, and he, now he's talking about no excuses for Anaver. By Anaver, he means people who are long Schwab. So he's talking about a short on Schwab because they they believe Schwab is also in a negative um, equity situation. They saw out outflow in their deposit of thirty three percent year over year, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, that I noticed during the whole Silicon Bank uh, blow up was yeah. uh, a lot of they were going after Schwab, and, yeah. and if you look at Schwab's chart, I mean, it, it really took a a significant hit as yeah. well. So, um, I guess you know when when things kind of settled down with the Silicon Bank, and you know things got resolved, Schwab came back up. But now I've noticed, I have noticed over the last week or so that. Schwab again is getting hit now. Whether that's you know function of the market or, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, Schwab was definitely on people's radar when Silicon Valley Bank blew up. Yeah, so this is where the bank blew up. <coughs> Schwab went down yeah. and then it recovered and now it has come down yeah. again. I genuinely think this this is a good short. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, whether you want to do it with options or, yeah. or um, I, I don't know what the short interest is on it right now. Let's take a look. Uh, <coughs> short interest gets updated monthly, so this yeah, is probably Yeah, so it may be a little bit dated. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, short float only at 2%. Yeah, so it's not a heavy short. But here's the thing with bank stocks. Uh, bank stocks are very expensive to short. So the big money managers rather short them through options because they have a really bad negative carry, right? Because you right. got you got to pay the dividend. Got to pay the dividend, yeah. And uh, they're hard to locate. So yes. that's probably one of the reasons you don't see them uh, with a massive mm-hmm. short locate. I mean, for options traders, if you're an options trader, you could consider selling an upside call and then using that money that you've taken in to buy a put. So it's like a risk reversal, right, like but a risk, like a yeah, yeah. on a, on a downside. Yeah. yeah, on the downside. So kind of a risk reversal trade. Um, so that's you know that's one way to do it without uh, putting out any money. Now, obviously, the downside is if the uh, if Schwab turns and goes higher and goes above the you know the strike that you chose for your call, you might end up uh, <laughs> shorting Schwab uh, I- unintentionally. So yeah. there is there is that risk, but you know. I think this is a good trade. Let's talk about <coughs> it off camera. Maybe maybe we'll take it together. Yeah, I might. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, like I, I wish I'd have done it, you know, like a lot of things. I wish I'd have done it a week ago because yeah. I think it was when I looked at it on the, I think I was looking at it on the weekend last week and I was thinking, you know, it's Schwab's looking like it's rolling over again. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. <coughs> uh, well, it's a tough environment when rates are uh, when short term rates are at almost six percent. It's a tough environment for banks to make money. So yeah, because people will take their deposit into money market. When they take their deposit, banks have to sell their securities, and a lot of those securities are at loss right now. So they have to realize those loss. Uh, even even with the new program Fed has introduced, that's also costly, right? It's not cheap. It's not free money. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, move on to the EV war. So mm-hmm. one of the stocks that have been on our radar has been Tesla. Tesla has had a lot of problems. Um, competition is coming, and one of the competition is uh, Honda. They got a forty thousand dollar car, a starting price, and it looks it looks really good. I got a video. Let's watch a little bit of it. Uh, together and kind of discuss and look at Tesla chart and see if we can see some kind of a pattern. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it, it seems like, you know, we've traveled a lot. It seems like um, it's uh, Vancouver's a real hot market yeah. that we're in. And Vancouver's a real hot market for EVs. I mean, yeah. I, I to, to pass the time when I'm driving out Marine, this one street, Marine Drive, there's always like a big backup of cars going the other way. Yeah. I always, I count the cars and I count the EVs and I count the regular cars. And it it's typically runs around 20%. Yeah. You know, one out of every five cars is an EV now. So it's, uh, you know, it's not like that in other parts of uh, of Canada and the U.S. Oh, but in the U.S., yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of EVs and, and a lot of nice looking EVs too. Nice, Kia looking. has a nice yeah. one. And it kind of reminds me of the Honda one. I hadn't seen the Honda one until you showed it to me. Yeah. But it's coming this year. And speaking <coughs> of that, by the way, BC has the highest number of EV sales per capita in North America. Ah, okay, so makes sense. Yeah, yeah. so any like y- you probably have seen Polestar cars here as well. So any yep. electric vehicle when they want to test the market, they come to Vancouver first because oh, they right? know this is the yeah this is the hottest market. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, as 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 probably a lot of people know in the community, I you know I bought a. Um, uh, EV car uh, BMW this year uh, had it for about two months now yeah. I absolutely love the car yeah. it's just uh, you know I, I love the electric part of it and I love the car itself so yeah so a bit of a plug there for BMW <laughs> <laughs> better get paid for it yeah exactly but it w- and it wasn't that expensive either that's amazing <coughs> yeah. so yeah let's let's watch this this again this awfully looks like uh, looks like a Range Rover from the back um, yeah, kind of, you know, and uh, I, Ionic 5, the Ionic 5 is another one. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's Hyundai. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's Hyundai has the Ion- yeah I know a, a friend of mine bought, uh, bought the Ionic. He's pretty happy with it. Yeah, and yeah, it's overall, it's like a beautiful car. This would probably lead into a lot of competition for Tesla. So I want to take a look at Tesla. Tesla has had a bad week uh, and probably a bad month as well. Uh, it did rally a lot, went to almost 300, um, and then went back. Now it's at around 240. What do you What do you think about Tesla here? You know, Tesla's kind of in a range right now. Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I think it still has the the Musk ca- cachet. Yeah. You know, and and certainly that's part of it. And yeah. people always argue it's not just a car company. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know. 
um, it's a power company or whatever you want to, or a technology company, whatever you want to, want to whatever label you want to put on it. But I still, I, it kind of looks like it's range bound here, sort of between, you know, sort of 230. Yeah, 220. Yeah, 220 to 280. Yeah, so uh, it just seems like that's kind of where the, at least at this point, that's kind of where it's settling out here. Yeah. So you see it kind of made a lower high on that last pop up. That's true. And, yeah. and you know, but it's, you know, it's it's hanging in there. Yeah, kind of like I, a cup and handle, yeah. per se, yeah. But, I, you know, I mean, th- th- that's, yeah, as you look at it from, you know, the chart perspective, we are sort of, you know, sort of just forming into a, you could also look at it as a pennant as well, right? I yeah. mean, you can make all sorts of things up here, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, you know, like I said, it seems to be settling into a bit of a, you know, a bit of a trading range. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's a, again, that's a good opportunity if you're a, if you're an options trader, um, you can do all sorts of options trades and, you know, sort of bet on the idea that it's not, it's not going to violate some levels. Yeah. Like selling upside calls or selling downside puts yeah. or doing a, str- a straddle or, or a condor, yeah, a yeah, condor or something yeah. like that, right? So, <clears throat> you know, you can. That's a great thing about options. You can, you can make a quote bet on uh, the stock not moving anywhere. Yeah. As opposed to, I've got to decide whether this stock's going to go, go up, up or, or down. down right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what makes it makes it great. Yeah. So let's transfer. Let's go to uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the week. So. Um, again, this is one of my favorite things. Let's start with the good. Meta had a great week. Uh, they released their new glasses, mm-hmm. uh, AI glasses, where it's actually pretty phenomenal. You put them on and it can translate stuff for you. You can see your notification on the top. Uh, have you seen the video of the release? Uh, no, I haven't. Let's <coughs> let's take a look at it quickly and then uh, talk a little bit about this. He had the some words for Apple as well, but Ray-Ban let's take a look at this. Smart glasses. They look good. At least. Yeah, they look good. I think that was one of the knocks on the Google glasses. Yeah. They were kind of ugly, whereas Facebook's decided to partner with Ray-Ban. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was, that was kind of smart. Ray-Ban's pretty iconic, uh, and they look good. I, I want to show you some of the features. So, for example, if you're outside and you see something and you're not sure what the name of this thing yeah. is, you can just ask it. Oh, okay. You can ask the AI, and it tells you, oh, this is the Washington Square Arc. Yeah, okay. Located in Manhattan. Or translate this sign for me. Okay. Uh, or how do I fix my leaky leaky fa- uh, faucet? Like, these are pretty cool, right? I mean, yeah. if they can do it, uh, they're saying coming next year. And he was asked about the comparison between these and the Apple. And he said, we're not in a business of selling really expensive hardware and make 50% profit. We're in a business of making good software, which okay. was a jab at Apple, which mm-hmm. was interesting, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, I think, you know, and, and they had that first stab at it with the, um, you Oculus. know, with the uh, Oculus. Yeah. And I have one of those. That they, You know, they're kind of a... a interesting toy I, yeah. I don't I don't put it on very much but you know I, I heard people talking uh, one guy talking about it and saying that it's never going to catch on because pe- because they're bulky unless yeah. they can do something about you know and they're and you're kind of isolated when you put them on and yeah. it's yeah it's sort of anti anti-social yeah um, aspect to it so um <coughs> he didn't think they were going to get you know any uptake but uh, you know like a pair of Ray-Ban glasses yeah. you know could you know is really uh, unobtrusive i mean people wear sunglasses sunglasses all the time, all the, time the, the only yeah. difference that you got little small things um, a lot of companies the snap tried it it failed but uh, if anyone can succeed it's probably meta yeah. and yeah. the market is definitely loving whatever he's doing the stock has tripled in in less than a year so yeah and the nice thing I, the one thing i like about meta is that you know if, if you look at some of the other stocks compared to meta we don't pull out any charts but it's it held up pretty well yeah um, during the during the sell off, it's yeah. actually held up really you know, well, really well. Yeah, and that's uh, this week I sold two ninety puts, yeah. which are basically make is essentially making a long bet, or at least a bet that that uh, Meta is not going to drop below two ninety, and it will yeah. expire tomorrow. I've already sold half of them, done pretty well on them. So beauty, yeah. So I I really like and, and what attracted me to that was the fact that Meta h- had really held up and. And now they came up with this announcement today. Kind of helped out my position. So it's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes and f- I mean, fu- fundamentally, they look really good too. I mean, yeah. trading at two times revenue, 
Yeah. So four of our P of 15, they're yeah, not, they're yeah, not so expensive. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's not expensive when you yeah. compare it to some of the other uh, high flyers. It's uh, it's on a PE basis, yeah. it's still, it's relatively, it, it's a good value. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So we talked about the good. Let's uh, move to the bad. Um and the bad is the iPhone. <laughs> so Apple stock has not been doing very well. There's a lot of issues with the iPhone, which, by the way, you're getting the yeah, new iPhone supposedly, 15. Supposedly, yeah, yeah. Well, I've ordered it. I'm, maybe I'm, I'm thinking twice about whether I want to take delivery of it. Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, the, I got a video for you to watch. You won't like it. <laughs> so there is the, the iPhone is overheating. There's an overheating issue. And then the new material that they're using, the titanium, titanium. apparently it's not as strong and as sturdy that there was. And there's chatter that they think Apple is doing it on purpose. Okay. Because uh, from 2008, 2009, <coughs> from the start of the first iPhone mm -hmm. till now, mm -hmm. the life, the kind of the changing life of an iPhone, like a, a person upgrading the right, iPhone, right. has increased from two years to four years. Uh, okay, yeah, I was going to say it's about four years now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it has doubled, and this is kind of a recurring revenue for right. for for Apple. So right. they don't like; th they're making too good of a phone. Right. So yeah. back to uh, planned obsolescence. Exactly. Right. That's you know I, I remember studying that in in business school like yeah. twenty years ago. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very important. Yeah. Like you can't make too good of a product. So one of the really famous YouTuber did a did a test, did a drop test on iPhone fourteen. Okay. And iPhone uh, fifteen. And I think the results were really interesting. Let's let's watch this together. It's only 30 seconds. Sure. This many drops was not on the list. Do we have to go even higher? That's no, he's dropping it from yeah, there. 20 he's feet? Uh, I mean, I feel like we got to see, we got to see how far the 14 Pro can go. Okay, here <laughs> we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, it's a bit, it depends how it lands too, right? That's true, but if you compare the 15, this is the 15, and uh, the camera the camera came off completely. Wow. This is the 15, and, and the 14 actually held up pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just take this for the road? Which is crazy, yeah. So yeah that's I've seen a lot of videos. When I was researching for this, uh, I saw a lot of videos like this. I think, uh, Wow. do you think it's on purpose? <laughs> who knows? I mean, obviously, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's been a common practice for ever since companies have been around and yeah. figured out that you know they don't want to make a product that lasts too long too because long. you know they're not going to get uh, reoccurring revenue or yeah. m more revenue. Exactly. So you know, I mean, it, yeah. I remember talking about this whole s planned obsolescence in yeah. twenty thirty years ago. So yeah. it's. N not a new not strategy. Yeah, it's absolutely. not a new strategy, and and are they doing it? I, I'm personally, I don't know, but yeah, it's certainly making me think about whether I want to <laughs> get a 15. Because my, because honestly, my 12 is fine. Yeah. Takes good pictures. It still still runs really well. So yeah. maybe, yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm thinking twice now. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh. There. That's bad for Apple stock. Yeah. And then lastly, the ugly. Um. This is a tweet from Quiver Quant. Um, a representative Tom Malunsky shorted the Treasury bond ETF TLT in 2020. Uh, the move almost was perfectly timed. TLT has fallen 45% since the trade. It's the largest drawdown on record. And then he's arguing that U.S. politicians shouldn't be allowed to profit off bets yeah. against U.S. economy. I kind of disagree with this because, yeah. you know, he was a smart. He knew that the rates are going to go up. So, yeah. you know, he shorted the bonds. But what are your thoughts? Do you think politicians... Well, certainly there's some, a, there's some... Obviously, there's some instances where they... They have inside information. Yeah. There's no yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, they know what bills are coming through and going to get passed, yeah. and they know who's going to benefit. Um, whereas th this type of a trade, I, I don't think he had a. He didn't have really uh, any more information than you or I did, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. he just uh, he just assumed. You know, he could. He just made a bet that yeah. uh, interest rates were going to keep rising, and yeah. that's exactly what uh, what he did. Yeah. And but nobody knew for sure because you know because of the way the economy went because of the you know the actions of the fed yeah so oh, in this well, case i don't i don't see an issue but same. yeah i mean there's yeah, th yeah there's there's definitely times where they've you know For where sure. yeah where these people have had inside yeah. information yeah. yeah information that the public hasn't yeah. um, been privy to and so they can you know make make great gains make because great of that gains. did you see that one of the i think a democrat 
um, member they found in house like bar of golds and the bribe <laughs> he was getting. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what that was was that Mendez? I don't know who it was, it but was, like from yeah. e- apparently from like some Egyptian connection because they wanted some gun contracts to Egypt and very interesting stuff. Very yeah. very weird stuff. And, and you know when you think about it, a lot of these politicians are making two hundred thousand a year, but their net worth is hundred million. Yeah, How yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. So that's about it. That's the show that uh, we kind of have planned for you. Any right. Anything you're looking forward to next week or? <clears throat> you know, I guess we're, you know, we're, we've got another week or two before earnings season kicks off again. Yeah. You mentioned the Schwab trade. It's quite interesting. Yeah. We can talk about that some more offline. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I've, you know, I've been in and out of a bit was the, um, was uranium, which seems oh, to yeah. be really, uh, you know, I, late, re- I'm really late to the game. I was yeah. watching uranium for a while, and I think when I, probably about the time I stopped watching it was the time it started to really break yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. So I, m- I missed the bigger move, but uh, yeah, uranium's been really strong, but it's run so far now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, there's got to be a reason for it. I'm just not sure what it is. I haven't looked into it. I don't know. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of talk about <coughs> switching to nuclear. nuclear and it's a, you know it's a, a green option, right? Yeah. And it's not um, it's not emitting carbon. No. You know there are some reusable, waste. right? Yeah. yeah there exactly. are some waste issues, waste disposal issues, but I think they can be managed. Yeah. But it's there's a, obviously a public perception. You know we had yeah. the Jap- Japanese th- thing, and then yeah. you had the Russian meltdown. Yeah. Um, you know, all all preventable, but you know, it leaves a bad taste and yeah, bad taste. And smell. nobody wants to have a, a nuclear power plant in their in their city or their backyard yeah, type thing, right? So NIMBYs, not yeah. in my backyard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that goes for everything. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think um, I, I'm kind of I'm just. I'm just t- sort of playing it day by day right now because mm-hmm. the market so I- is is seems to be trending down. It might be bottoming, but you know it's still volatile. So I think it's a good time to to you know park some money in a treasury or something and yep. get five or six percent yep. and uh, you know keep some money on the side to That's take right. yeah to take opportunities like I did with Meta this week. That's kind of what I'm I'm doing. I'll, I'll look at Meta again next week. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, our stats shows that 80% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So, you know, if you enjoy the content, we're going to record these every Thursday, uh, put it out on Friday, send a newsletter with it. So, um, you know, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, help us grow, and uh, we'll create more more amazing contents. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for joining us today and uh, give us a thumbs up. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>